Welcome back to Fossil Ridge Games. Today we are going to work on a deck building strategy guide for War Machine for the Marvel Champions Living Card Game. First off, when you are playing War Machine, you're going to be in your alter ego mode on your first turn. So while you're doing your mulligan action, you can be potentially discarding uh, War Machine cards in your discard pile. So just understand like his action is to actually pull cards from your discard pile back into your draw deck and shuffle them in. So don't be shy to use your mulligan action and throw a bunch of cards. And they could even be War Machine cards, maybe some of the higher cost ones that you know that you're not going to use early on in the game. Go ahead and just cycle them back into your deck. Um, next up for his forced response, whenever he turns into his alter ego mode to take a break, all the ammo counters are removed from him. When you flip him over into his hero form, he will load five ammo tokens onto him. The ammo tokens are going to be used to activate a host of his abilities. Pretty much all of his events and all of his supports trigger off of using ammo counters. And then when he runs out, you flip him back. Um, he takes a break and then you flip him back again into hero mode and he gets those five ammo counters back. Here's a couple of his basic support and upgrade cards. The first one is his uh, upgrade chassis. And this is going to be his power armor, essentially, that he's wearing. What's great about this, it's going to give him the aerial trait. So the last video I did with Spectrum, I walked you through all of the aerial cards. So go ahead and check out that video or just understand that once you put this onto War Machine, he is aerial and you can start using those events. It's a great option. Um, this is pretty cool, too, that when he flops back into hero mode, he gets a tough status card. All you have to do is exhaust the chassis to do that. Then the card on the right is really, really cool. It's the munitions bunker. And when you're in alter ego form, you can tap and exhaust this thing to put two ammo counters onto the munitions bunker. And then when you're in hero form, what you can do is you can exhaust this bunker and then move the tokens onto War Machine. So obviously the ammo tokens, as I mentioned before, really power all of his abilities. And some of his abilities, one of them in particular, uses four ammo counters. And so if you're using four out of five of your ammo counters, you need a way to build it up. So don't pass up the munitions bunker. If you see it early on in the game, try to get it out as soon as possible. To get the War Machine engine really moving, his hero cards have two copies of the Gauntlet Gun. This is pretty fantastic. You can exhaust the Gauntlet Gun and you can generate a wild resource for only a War Machine event. So just be really careful on that wording. It's not any event. It has to be a War Machine event. And at the same time that you do that, you can place an ammo counter on War Machine. So you can use this to generate wild resources and then put ammo counters on them. And there's two of these in the deck. So for your basic ramping, uh, you wanna get these early on, at least one of them fairly quickly at the start of the game, if you can, and get it out on the table. It will help with your resource generation and ammo generation as well. War Machine is guns, guns, and more guns. Two of his cards are upgrades. They're fairly, cheap to put out. Uh, the one on the left I really like, it's the missile launcher. You can exhaust the missile launcher and dump an ammo counter. And you can do two points of damage to an enemy. It also gains ranged, so you can avoid retaliate if that's a problem. And then the card on the right is the shoulder cannon. It eats through a ton of ammo and it's, it's great for sort of chipping away toughness tokens on an enemy. You know, so you always have like a built-in gun essentially on War Machine that you can uh, take out those toughness counters. And also too, if you really need to take out an enemy and spend a couple extra counters, go ahead and do it. So when you use this weapon, you exhaust it and you dump an ammo counter. Then you can spend another ammo counter to ready it. Okay, so that's gonna be two. And then if you use it again, you have to dump another ammo counter for three. So you're gonna dump three ammo counters for two points of damage but you can use it to selectively attack different targets, and sometimes that's what you need to get the job done. Um, in general, though, use your shoulder cannon sparingly because it eats through so much ammo. Let's get into some of War Machine's events. Some of these can be pretty potent and pretty powerful. Scorched Earth is by far one of the most effective uh, area of effect style attacks in the entire game. It will burn through three ammo counters. It costs three resources to play, but it deals three damage to each enemy in play. 
in a multiplayer game, this is absolutely ridiculous. Three points of damage to everything on the table. That changes the game drastically. Even some of the more difficult scenarios where you're just overwhelmed and being swarmed by minions and enemies, this is a game changer. So be on the lookout to play Scorched Earth, especially in multiplayer games. It is super, super potent, super powerful. Repulsor Beam on the side. You know, classic Iron Man slash War Machine power armor style attack. It's pretty cool. It's only one cost, and you remove one ammo counter from War Machine to deal four damage to an enemy. What's really great is, like, most of the time when you're playing, if you have the gauntlet gun out, um, it's pretty cool because you can generate the resource using the gauntlet gun, and then you get an ammo counter for it. So you're basically playing the repulsor beams for free. I found that to be really fun, really cool. And uh, you can really sustain a long time uh, by using the repulsor beam. Next up, we have targeted strike. Every character has some sort of way to mitigate threat. This is War Machine's ability. Remove one ammo, spend one resource to remove three threat from a scheme. Really basic card. Now the card on the right is full auto, and this thing absolutely rocks. It's fantastic to play. It's gonna burn through four ammo counters. So when you do cast this, it only costs two um, resources to actually do this, but it deals eight damage to the enemy and it gains overkill. So you can blast up some sort of minion that's that's hanging out on you or one of your friends and then smack the villain really hard. But where this gets really insane is keep in mind War Machine's alter ego talent. So let's say you just burn through, you know, the majority of your ammo counters by firing full auto because you burned, you know, four of them. Just remember too that full auto goes to your discard pile. So when you flip back over to your alter ego form, you're, you have the ability to get a War Machine card from your discard pile and shuffle it into your deck. So what you're going to immediately do is, when you flip back over, take the full auto and throw it back into your draw deck. And this is pretty potent and powerful, so recycle a lot of War Machine's cards, but recycling full auto is absolutely fantastic. I found it to be pretty ridiculous, especially if your deck is getting your draw deck is getting fairly slim try to maintain um try to maintain that slim draw deck and try not to use too many cards what you're going to do is super saturate that small draw deck with full autos and you can literally flip back and forth and just keep doing full auto over and over again it's really effective really surprising i found that war machine's damage output can be just staggering if you do this a couple times and you get lucky and draw another full auto uh, what makes this combo even better is there's two copies of full auto in the deck. So once you get your deck kind of small and there's not much in that draw deck, you are pulling these things all the time and it gets really crazy. There's a couple fun cards that are present in the deck that I made just for this video. And these are both leadership aspect cards. I really enjoyed the leadership aspect when uh, messing around with all the different aspects. I thought it was the most fun. So the first one, Sneak Attack, and this is very reminiscent of things that you would uh, you know, see in the Lord of the Rings game. This one is just a one-cost event. You cast it, and it pops a ally into play, but then it goes away at the end of the phase. So as an example, for one casting cost, you could bring out Captain Marvel, although she's five. But at the end of the phase, she's going to have to be discarded. Um, but that's okay. So some of the fun things that you can do is look for cards that trigger some sort of effect when you bring them into play. Or they have a high amount of consequential damage that they take, or something that would discard them anyway, you know, like such as Goliath. Um, so this was also in the, in the pre-built deck for War Machine as well. So this person, you know, if he attacks, he's going to attack at a plus four, so he's going to hit for five. But then he has to be discarded at the end of the turn. Well, who cares? Because on sneak attack, you have to discard them anyway. Now, on the right-hand side of the screen is a fun card that you can play to also cycle things in and out. Now, the one on the right, they actually have to be defeated, which means that they have to take lethal damage to be defeated. But if they do take lethal damage and they are defeated, you can bring them back into play and then trigger their effects again so let's say you know you have captain marvel out you brought her out legitimately using the five resources she's getting you know a little bit weak 
you attack one last time, hit for three points of damage, and then she is defeated. She pops out of play, you uh, get rid of rapid response, now she comes back into play. When she does, it triggers her response again when she comes into play. So with a combination of these two cards, so both sneak attack and rapid response, you can constantly be sort of cycling your allies in and out of play and triggering those effects when they do come into play. This is a fantastic option and it's a lot of fun. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're deck building that leadership aspect has a lot going on, uh, specifically with War Machine. And I'll show you next up some of the other combos that you can do with using some of these other cards, which are pretty fantastic. The pre-made War Machine deck came with a couple cards that I thought were actually pretty cool. So the first one is Go Down Swinging. And what you can do is discard an ally you control to deal damage to an enemy um, equal to that ally's printed cost. So once again, this goes really well with sneak attack. You're going to put some sort of heavy, you know, ally down to the table. You know, in this case, let's throw Falcon down. So now we have a four resource cost character. He's going to burn out anyway at the end of the phase. So he's going to be removed from the game anyway. So why not just take him out by go down swinging? With a zero cost event, we can pull Falcon off the table because he's done anyway. And then we can hit for an additional four points of damage. So that's fantastic. And then the other card that's almost identical to this is Save the Day. So same thing. Let's, you know, say Falcon comes out. Um, he does his thing. He's going to be removed because of the effect. So then we can just get rid of him preemptively by casting this, Save the Day. And it removes threat from a scheme equal to that ally's printed cost. So now we can use him because he's going to be discarded anyway. It doesn't matter. Let's burn him out and remove four threat from a scheme. So all of these cards really work well and synergize together. I thought that the pre-made deck it was probably one of the more fun pre-made decks that I've played in a long time. I thought it made a lot of sense. I thought it was a cool set of combos um, and I highly encourage you to try it out. Obviously, when I do deck building, I try like all the different aspects. I found leadership to be the most satisfying, at least with War Machine, um, so I highly recommend it. Here's some of my final thoughts on War Machine. When I was playing him, I got somewhat obsessed with just firing missiles and full autos and all sorts of junk off of his uh, exoskeleton. I really enjoyed it, but I was super reckless when I was playing with him, and it's just something about how he's built. So I would be careful and cautious to understand that he only has 10 hit points. He does have a defense of 2, um, but it seemed like I kept pushing my luck and pushing my luck. It was very reminiscent of playing like Star-Lord, almost. So when you're playing him, just don't have a blind side to the fact that he only has 10 hit points. He's a little bit squishy, not awful. Um, and try to hold yourself back. You, you almost kind of get addicted to just launching missiles and, and attacking with this guy. It's, it's really, really fun, but also lures you into this sort of like reckless um, attacking behavior. You know, to some extent, it's almost like playing Hulk as well. Um, so I really enjoyed War Machine. Uh, I was kind of thinking, oh, it might feel kind of like Iron Man, but it actually felt kind of legitimately different. I liked the ammo mechanic. I thought it was fun. I thought it was neat and inventive. So, you know, I kind of recommend trying out War Machine if you definitely like what I've just described to you. I want to thank you again for watching this video and spending some time on this channel. I really appreciate your support, and I always want to tell everybody, please enjoy gaming. It's one of the funnest and, and the best things that I have in my life, and I hope you all are enjoying gaming as well. So until next time, have fun gaming.